Hello everyone, my name is Isaac from the Innovation Consortium and today I would like to share with you about angle lines, why they are, how to classify them and basically the different materials in which they are made. Uh, to start with, I would like you to get a clear image of what I'm talking about. Uh, this component I'm holding here or this metal I'm holding, it's what we call an angle line and we normally use it in the framing and fabricating. Uh, they could be shutters, machines, or any other fabrication works. Uh, this is what we call an angle line. Uh, to talk about the specification of this very angle line, angle lines have two main specification, and those come with the sizes, the different sizes of the angle lines, and the other specification is with actually the type of material in which the angle line is being made of. To start by talking about the different types of materials in which angle lines are being made of, uh, this very one I'm holding here, this is low carbon steel or mild steel. Uh, so specifically, this angle line is made out of mild or low carbon steel. Uh, the other types of material, we have aluminium, the aluminium angle lines actually, uh, they are stainless angle lines, uh, they are galvanized steel angle lines, and very many other types of materials. So specifically, the classification in accordance to the materials, uh, it will be within those range of materials I've been talking about, and the others, uh, to mention but a few. Uh, there is mild steel, uh, there is stainless, there is aluminium, there is galvanized and very many other types of materials in which angle lines are being made out of. Uh, the second classification or specification that will come with the size or the measurements or the dimensions of the cross section of the angle line. What do I mean with the dimensions of the cross section of the angle line? Uh, the dimensions, I mean the measurements actually. And the measurements are within the height, the length. So an angle line has nothing like the length or the height. Depending on where the face, any face is sitting, that's where we derive its base and its height. So if it's sitting on this face, this will be the length and this will be the height. An angle line, the dimensions of the cross section of an angle line just depend on where the face of an angle line, a particular face, because it has two faces. It has this one and this one. So depending on where the face is sitting or which face is sitting, that's when we get the cross section uh, of the angle line. So here we are having, if it's sitting on this face, we shall consider this at the width, the, the width of this angle line and this as the height of the angle line. So if it sits on the other end, uh, vice versa, this will be uh, the width and this will be the height. And the length is this. So to further explain about the cross section of the angle line, I'll be drawing a simple sketch on our board so that we can understand the specification of the size or depending on the size of the angle line. So considering this is our angle line, <coughs> this is the cross section of our angle line, uh, sorry. If it's sitting on this face, this will be the height. So with the classification, depending on the size or in accordance to the size of the cross section of the angle line, uh, we shall take a simple sketch so that we, we understand more about the classification of the size in accordance to the size of the cross section of the angle line. So we shall draw a simple sketch. So this is the cross section of an angle line. That's the cross section, as you can see, that is the sketch 
and this is the angle line itself. So you can see, this is what we call the cross section. It's the sketch I'm drawing here. Uh, then, we shall be going this way. Hope you get the clear picture there. So taking the measurements of this angle line, uh, we shall take the width and the height. Let's take the height to be A and the width to be B. Uh, and the other measurement will be with the length. And the standard length, to clarify on that, the standard length of most of our materials uh, be it angle lines or pipes, it's always 6 meters or 5.8. The 5.8 is normally, normally comes from the packaging. Normally when they are transporting these angle lines or any materials, steel materials, remember containers in which they are transported in, they are 40 feet, uh, 30 feet, so they have to cut off, to trim off, so that they, these materials fit in the containers. But in manufacturing, they, they normally, actually, they, they manufacture six meters in the overall length of an angle line or a square pipe or any, any material, any sections we use in our daily fabrication works. So going back to the angle line, uh, to measure the cross section, we shall take the height, we take the width, uh, we take the thickness, the thickness of the angle line, this is the thickness, as you can see, from here to here. The same applies. From here to here. Mainly the thickness of the two faces is normally, actually it's the same. The measurement of this bottom face, of the width, is this, the same as the thickness of the face of the height. So, uh, after understanding the cross section, then we shall talk about how to measure the dimensions of these cross sections. Now, how to measure the angle line practically. Uh, this one was a sketch. Now, this is the actual angle line. All measurements, we drive them from this edge of the angle line. So if I'm to measure the height and the width, I get my tape measure or caliper. I place the clip at the edge of the angle line. Then I roll out my tape measure. Let me change it this side around. I place the clip onto the, the edge of the angle line. Then I roll out the tape measure. The measurement I'm having here, it's showing 50, those are 50 millimeters, meaning the width of this angle line is 50 millimeters. Then if I'm to change to the other face to measure, still the same, I use the edge as my reference or my starting point. I place the clip onto it, then I measure. It's also showing 50 millimeters. So basically, this is a 50 by 50 angle line. Uh, but to further explain more about that, uh, most angle lines, and I, I repeat, most of the angle lines, both faces, the sizes are the same. Uh, but on rare occasions, you'll find angle lines when here it's a 50, and here maybe it's a 60, but it's on rare occasions. Yes, they are manufactured, but the most common types of angle lines we have, the measurements are always the same, basically. So this one, it's 50, 50 by 50. So if I'm to purchase an angle line, I order for 50 by 50. That is the, the measurement of the height and the width of this angle line.
that's the other measurement we talked about was the thickness of this particular angle line. Uh, with the thickness, we always get a vernier caliper. Uh, as you already know how to use the caliper, because we had explained it in our previous sessions of outro. I just hold my caliper. Uh, I hold the angle line. Then I place, I use the face as the reference of my starting point. I place out one jaw of the caliper, then I take the measurements, then they will be able to achieve the thickness or to know the specific thickness of this angle line. So here the readings are showing six millimeters as you can see. So the thickness is six millimeters. <coughs> so this one. This one, remember this was 50, and this was 50, and the thickness we are from measuring it has shown us 6 millimeters. It's, it's fine. Eh? So, so basically, for the cross section, we've already took the measurements. Uh, we are having a 50, a 50 and the six millimeters. So this angle line, the specification, in accordance, to its size, eh? or its cross section, its, its cross section, you know, dimensions. So we are having our A, remember our A was the height, our B was the width, and we had the thickness We had the thickness, and the other measurement was the overall length. The overall length. So basically, to get it to get the specific size of an angle line, we shall have to measure the height, the width, then the thickness plus the overall length. The overall length, the standard overall length. The standard overall length, remember we said it's 5.8 or 6 meters. These are meters. Remember these measurements we've been talking about are in millimeters. These are 50. So these are, this is a 50 by 50 by 6 millimeter angle line. Remember all the measurements we are taking are in millimeters. So this is a 50 by 50 by 6 millimeter angle line. So the overall length or the standard length will be 5,800 millimeters or 6,000 millimeters. So it's a, a 50 by 50 by 6 by 5,800 or 6,000 millimeter angle line. So that's how we specify an angle line, depending or in accordance to its size or the cross-sectional size. Uh, to give another example, we had only seen one, one type or one size of angle line. We have another size. Uh, it's also an angle line, but it's relatively smaller in the cross-section measurements. So it's the same process. We measure the height, the, the height, <coughs> we measure the height, the width, plus the thickness, and the overall length. So with this, we are having, it's showing a three millimeters, and here also, it's showing three millimeters this side. Uh, 
the height the height is showing 38 to our caliper in the other face it's also showing 38 then the overall length will be 5.8 the standard overall length so these ones are just samples we are using to show what an angle line is but if you're purchasing one the overall length will be 5.8 or 5,800 millimeters 5.8 those are meters and 5,800 those are millimeters so basically that's how we specify an angle line in accordance to its size or to its cross-sectional dimensions. Thank you, I hope you've understood how to specify the different types of angle lines uh, with their types of materials or with their sizes. I remain Isaac from the Innovation Consortium. Thank you very much.